Hi guys, welcome to Hack Explorer. In this episode, we'll be talking about packet analysis, which is an important skill that a security professional should master and will be using the world's leading network traffic analyzer, Wireshark. So if you're a beginner, don't worry, there's a lot of step-by-step -step guides over here and along the way, you'll be learning a lot about how to master this tool. So continue watching and welcome to my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe. Malware Traffic Analysis with Wireshark Wireshark is a popular tool for troubleshooting network related issues, but in cybersecurity, you can discover many interesting events that is happening on a network. For example, we can collect a lot of IOCs, which are known as indication of compromise. Uh, IOCs, in simply explained, these are pieces of forensics data that we collect during an analysis. For example, IP addresses, domain names, use agents, and all the rest of things that are here, which can be some of the IOCs that can be collected during a cyber investigation. How can we use the IP address? If an IP address is detected as spreading malware to our network, we can immediately block it. Same thing goes for a domain name. Collection of IOCs will help an organization to detect and prevent attacks. In this demonstration, we'll be looking at some specific IOCs from a network traffic capture. So let's jump into Wireshark. Wireshark can be used in two ways. One is you can perform a local capture of the network traffic and analyze it. Or oh, there are a lot of sites which offers you sample packet captures for analysis. I'm using a packet capture from malwaretrafficanalysis.net. I have given the link below. So I'm using one of the capture samples given by them. Click open. The basic things are you can see the source and the destination IPs which are connected, which protocols they are using, and the info will provide you more information. Uh, but this default view, we can enhance it. We can add more features or remove some unwanted features to make our analysis easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the display easier to view. I won't be needing the number of packets, so I'm going to remove the packet number and packet length, I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to do some modifications for the time. This time is in seconds. I'll be changing this view, the time display format into date and time of, which will show you the date and time of the network event. So let's add on columns as we go on. Uh, one of the first things that you have to do when you receive a capture like this is understand what type of protocols that are used inside this traffic capture. For example, if you go to the statistics menu, which will be using a lot to get summarized information, first things that I go is the protocol hierarchy. So this window shows a summary of what protocol activity that we see. For example, we see some in IP version 6 traffic, IP version 4, which is 98%. So I'm interested in this section. This is where all the things are happening. Inside that also we see some TCP and UDP traffic. So UDP normally we can use to get machine related information uh, such as DHCP and DNS requests and here where we can see the application level traffic. According to this graph we can see there is a lot of HTTP activity, hypertext transfer protocol activity which indicates this is something related to web traffic. Uh, if I give you an example in this malware traffic analysis.net this uh, packet capture is all about user downloading a malware so definitely we'll be finding in the hypertext transfer protocol so in the normal view you can see all the protocols since we are in interested in HTTP traffic I am going to use a filter you can type a filter over here or you can use this window and just right click and apply this section as a window so I'm telling Wireshark to show me only the HTTP traffic if I close this window, the HTTP traffic and all the uh, related traffic over here, but I'm going to filter out like this. So I'm going to use a method called HTTP.request. The HTTP request filter will show me only the GET and the POST requests that are made from the source to the destination. You can see we have narrowed down a search more, so you have a less number of uh, traffic to analyze now. Right. Now, to make uh, the interface more meaningful and more understandable, I can add more columns. For example, we can see uh, a source and a destination and the request that is made, but we can see only the URL path. And this destination IP address won't be meaningful. In this second 
uh, section of this Wireshark, you can see all the protocol related information. I'm, I'll be using the hypertext transfer protocol section. And if you go inside here, you can see this will contain the actual host name. So right click and apply this as a column. Now you can see clearly where did this source connect to. Uh, we can add some more information into the column display to make it more informational. For example, when I'm doing this, I get the source port and I'm going to get it from here, uh, the source port and I'm going to add another column called the DST port. I'll make this as PORT to make the column more short. I'll make this as RC port. Okay, and here you can select the destination port from here. Click OK. Yeah, uh, the ports normally will show in the corner. You can drag and move them or you can also go to column preferences and I want it right over here. So this will make my life more easy. To make it clear, you can align this data to left or right according to your preferences. So now we have more information. So this is how you set up your column display to in order to make your analysis more easier. So we can see the time and the source and destination ports and the sites that they're connected to. All of these data are derived from the packet that data that we have. Right now, as I told you, this packet capture is containing a malware download. So we can see according to the HTTP request, only this machine accessed internet. Right. Now we'll see what are the questions that we are looking into. So we want to find the affected file downloaded and their hashes. I'm going in this order. I'm going to answer all of these questions. So first we'll see how to find the infected files that are downloaded. You can see all the file requests from here. But if you want to get the actual file, you need to go to file. And there's an option called export objects. And you can see all the HTTP objects which were downloaded in this packet capture. There's a lot of content types. I'll sort them out. Uh, you can see application in GIF and HTML in JavaScript. When you are looking for malware, the tag that you are to use is content type and the application type over here. There's three different categories of applications which you download. A Java file, MXX download, which could be an EXE or executable Microsoft download, and shock file FRAF. These are the main ways of affected file can be downloaded. Other than this, there could be word files, which is having a macro as direct executables. These files are the most suspicious one. I'm going to click on the file and I'm going to click save. Uh, yeah, this is the Java archive. I'll add the dot jar extension for this. And I'm going to take a sample of this. So this was executable. So I'm going to say exe and this is a shockwave object. So I'm going to save this as a dot SWF file. There's no need to rename this one, but uh, I need to identify the file later. So that's why I'm adding the extension for the files. But remember, the application content type is the thing that you have to look for when if you're looking for any malware. PDF and Microsoft down file downloads are also suspicious. So I'm going to open my Explorer window and go to my Wireshark investigation and go to sample download. So you can see these are the three files that are downloaded. Uh, now we have to see whether these are malicious. In this situation, we can use the help of virus total. We can upload the files and see if these are infected. I, I don't recommend uploading the files directly because imagine this is Microsoft Word document which is having any confidential data. And if you upload it, your data is out of the organization. In virus total, there's option where they accept the hash of the file and tell if it is malicious or not. So in this type of situations, it's better to have a file ready to answer your questions. So first of all, what are the infected files and their hashes? So how do you get the hash of a file? So you have a lot of tools. One of the main tools that I love is offered by Nearsoft. I'll post the link for this file in the description window. So this is a very useful tool to extract the file hashes from a given file. So we have the file name and the file hashes. So I'm going to copy the file hashes. It's very easy. All the file hashes at one. These are the ones that I should check. I'll copy the MD5 version of this. Go to my notepad editor 
and just place the hashes over here. So first of all, we have collected the hashes, which we are going to check for any virus information. Let me jump into my virus total window and search see it will accept the file hash let's check if it is malicious so it's infected so this is i'll mark this as infected let's check for the other file and paste it over here hmm that seems to be file that is safe but just to be CF. I'll download this one. And you can see we have another infected file which is SWF. Okay. SWF. Uh, I'll just copy this one back again. I believe it's the jar file. Yep. Java exploit infected Java uh, I'll leave this hash around because uh, that was also executable which was downloaded this could be a virus which was uh, not yet discovered it could be a zero day but we are not sure but we'll see if this the source is compromised or something we have to make sure this file is also not downloaded okay that is how you use virus total in these kind of situations. So the second question is, what is the URL domain of the infected site? Let's jump back into Wireshark. Uh, we have, can see the application was downloaded from this particular host name, stand.trustandproperty.com. Okay, so I'll copy this. And what is the IP address of the injected website now we need the IP address of this one so that will be available in the internet protocol we can copy this value and paste it over here right and that was easy what is the IP address of the infected machine so in our case the infected machine is the source over here if I'll copy the value over here right so that was easy. The next we have to find another two things. So what is the host name of the infected machine and the MAC address. If you go to IP Ethernet related information. So this should be the source MAC address. I'll copy the value first. So I paste it here. I need the host name now. Let me go into the protocol hierarchy. So there are many protocols which can be used to find the host name. I go to statistics and protocol hierarchy. Here you can find a lot of naming services and internet protocol and the UDP protocol. You have NetBIOS and DHCP, which can also uh, be used to find the MAC and host information. Uh, I'll use uh, the DHCP, the most common way to find protocol. So it's easy. You can just right click apply this as filter or you can just go to DHCP which will show you all the DHCP related requests. So the host name of this particular IP. So we can see there are two requests, the inform and the request. So normally in the DHCP request, we should find the host information. So if you go expand this dynamic host configuration protocol, and if you go in, you can see the client MAC address who has requested, which is uh, the same MAC address that we found here, 9BF1. And if you dig in deeper, you will be able to find the host name. And this is another way you can apply this as a column. And get the host name. Copy this, copy value. And now we have found a lot of information related to this activity. So the first parts, infected file hashes can be blocked inside our network using our virus card so if they see this file hash you can easily tell the virus card to detect that virus and delete it we can block access to these sites and ip addresses and we can make an investigation on this pc to see if it is infected and make sure the malware is cleaned 
So this is how we carry out a Wireshark investigation. So if you want to learn more about this type of investigations, you can always refer to the Wireshark uh, 101, Essential Skills for Network Analysis by Laura Chappell. So this book will help you a lot of tips and tricks by using Wireshark. So this is from the founder and the creator of Wireshark. So that's information for you. And again, if you want to learn more, go to malwaretrafficanalysis.net, which will have a lot of exercise related to the traffic. So there are a lot of latest things. Just download a copy. Uh, make sure you run these on a sandbox. These because these have our live viruses inside these uh, packet captures. So make sure you are careful when you are handling these things. If you enjoy this video, please give a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe. And hope to bring you more videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching.